Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the channel and checking out what off-gridding is like. What's that day in the spring and the fall where it's uh, equal amounts of daylight is uh, to equal amounts of darkness? Anyway, it's time to adjust my solar panels. Let's do it. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. Alright guys, if you guys haven't seen my uh, upgrade video on the on the solar panel bank that I put up, I created this so that I could actually tilt this thing back, and it's that time of year when I've got to do that. So, let's get to it. Now, first thing i got to do is take off my strap right here. I still plan on making a, a, a bar that I can bolt right here and bolt right there and have, have it adjustable for two different times of the year. But until I do that, I've actually got this uh, ratchet strap that way it keeps this frame tight against the frame of the uh, of the whole rack in order to keep this thing solid and stable while the wind's blowing. All right guys, it's about noon, which is the highest point of the day where the sun is at. And I'm gonna get an idea of where these solar panels are actually facing. Using my square right here. And looking at the sun, I'm about 15 to 20 degrees below uh, perpendicular to the sun. So this panel needs to tilt back quite a ways until I'm facing directly at the sun. Huh. I still got to go another 10 degrees. Huh. Still got to go another couple degrees. Well, that's actually a little bit higher, but I want to go I want to go about 10 degrees higher than where the sun is now. Uh, we'll talk about that angle and those degrees here in just a second and uh, give you guys the optimum degrees, but uh, Right now, I believe this is at about a 45. So let's measure that right now. All right, guys, as you guys can see that right now, it's about a 45 degree angle. Let's go, I'm gonna measure that right now for you and show you guys what it is. And then I'm gonna actually go a little bit past that so it's a little more flat so that I only have to do this twice a year. I do it one time in the spring, and I do it one time in the fall. So I wanna get it closer to optimum for the summertime and then in the fall time, I want to get it closer for optimum during the winter time. So I only go, I, I could theoretically, as easy as this, this is, is just go perfectly perpendicular to the sun right now. But in 30 more days, I have to do it every month. That sun's going to climb up in the, in the horizon uh, a couple more degrees and it won't be perfectly perpendicular. We're also going to talk about how much more power you're going to generate by having your panels perfectly perpendicular at the sun. Does it make a difference? You guys leave me a comment down there and let me know what you guys think about that in your experience. And then uh, we'll take a look at some of the science here. Let me show you guys a really neat trick so you guys can check out what the angle is on something using a simple square. Okay, so you guys see this little notch right here? If you put your string with a plumb bob right in that little notch right there and you can hold it like so, you put this straight edge along whatever edge you're checking, wherever that plumb bob ends up, will tell you what the angle is. Pretty cool, huh guys? Okay. So according to this, I am at about, you guys can see what that is, about a 52 degree angle. So if it was a little bit more this way, it would be more of a 45. So this is about a 52 degree angle right here. Yeah, it looks a little flatter than 45, so I can verify that with my eyeballs. All right, as you guys can see, the sun is right up there behind that cloud there. And uh, this is a little bit higher than where the sun's at. But by the time summer comes around, that sun's going to be clear up here. So I may still come out and adjust these, but I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference. Um, let's, go, let's go take a look at some of the percentages and some of the science behind this. 
All right, guys, this is a website that I found absolutely fantastic called solarpaneltilt.com. It's absolutely free, and it has all kinds of fabulous information on it. It's going to give you the comparisons of a fixed tilt panel system versus an adjustable tilt panel system. And I wanted to make sure that I could adjust my panels uh, as much as I want because you get anywhere from 10 to 40% more power if you are tilting your panels at different times of the year and getting more direct sunlight on them and optimizing that exposure. A fixed tilt system just does not maximize the power output. So you can get pretty decent power output, but like in the winter time, you want those panels facing almost directly at the sun to get the most power in the winter. And then it gives you all the formulas depending on what your latitude is. And you can figure out what the angle is of your panels that you need to have to get the best absorption rates out of your panels. This also tells you about adjusting twice a year versus adjusting four times a year. I absolutely love that. And I'm going to do mine twice a year. And it even gives you the dates and the times depending on whether you're in the northern or the southern hemisphere. Uh, it'll give you all the comparative numbers for winter tilting, uh, winter uh, four times a year versus two times a year. It's absolutely fantastic. I couldn't, I couldn't recommend this, this website enough. Again, I'll leave the link down in the description so you guys can check it out whenever you get a chance. I'm going to be doing mine two times a year at the spring and the fall equinox, and it gives you those dates. I'm going to make sure that this sucker is secured. All right, guys, I've got my straps right here, and that strap is going to pull against the frame. Uh, which will be pulling against this cable, which is good for 8,000 pounds, and that'll make this thing super, super stable. This thing is pretty stable. It does shimmy a little bit when we get some really high winds, but it is pretty darn solid. If you guys went back and saw my video on, on when I upgraded my solar panels, I showed you some pictures of and some video of when these solar panels actually had fallen over when, the, when I didn't have that third leg built into it. All of you flat earth goofballs are going to love this. When the sun comes up in the morning time, it does not come up in one spot and travel in a straight line across the sky. Well, the sun's not actually moving, it's stationary and the world is turning and because the world is a ball, it is on a parabolic curve. It does not follow a straight line. We are moving in a parabolic curve because we're on a, a circle. So as, as the earth is turning, the sun comes up, it's not following a perfectly straight line uh, across the sky. So when you want to put these panels at a certain angle for the time of year that you're at, you want to put them to be able to capture the most sun and, and basically split the difference between the morning sun versus the noon sun versus the after the afternoon or late evening sun. So you want to put these things and that that off that website solarpaneltilt.com is a great resource. So you guys can see where I've got my solar panels right now they're at about a 52 degree angle. That's going to be just about optimum for the summertime because the sun's going to be probably right about here in the noontime. But when it rises in the east, it's going to be it's going to be coming up over there, follows a little bit of a curve. And then as it goes down, the sun sets over there, but it's not a perfectly straight line. Now, in the in the wintertime, the sun is barely coming up right over the mouth of the valley and it's doing a really low pass right across these mountains and then it's setting back over there so that's why the that's why having these panels almost vertical captures the most sun in the winter time and i get really good results with it if you guys have seen any, any of my shorts where just about a month ago we had uh, a late season uh, a late winter storm come through and dump a bunch of snow on here and that's part of the off-grid chores or off-grid realities is because we're not connected to the grid anyway. And I don't want to use any propane. I want to use these solar panels as much as I can. Keeping these things clear of snow is critical for us to have as much power as we can through the wintertime without using propane. Summertime, my batteries are topped off by 9 o'clock in the morning. But we do a lot of stuff during the day daytime. We do our vacuuming. We do our wash. We have an electric washer and dryer, but the dryer is propane. Uh, we do everything that re consumes or requires a lot of power, such as welding or running power equipment. We do that in the daytime on a sunny days when we don't have to worry about touching any of the power reserves in our batteries. So getting these panels 
and I'm adjusting these twice a year. Uh, the only time that uh, we're using really that much uh, power is when we're doing extra things like wash or vacuuming, or when Olivia's making me some of her awesome bread with her KitchenAid. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave the link in the, in the, at the end, and you can click and watch Olivia making some awesome sourdough bread off grid. And stay tuned for some awesome stuff on that bread making. We have a store in town locally that uh, is has just opened up that's going to be selling wheat kernels. So we're going to start grinding our own wheat hopefully this summertime. So stay tuned for that, guys. This was a cheap Harbor Freight boat winch that was good for 1,000 pound capacity. I put a little bit of tension on this cable and pull it against my straps. I plan on making a, a bar right here that I can adjust twice a year. I'll have it in two positions. It'll be attached here and they'll have two different locations where I can unbolt it, tilt the panels down and bolt it back up. And those will be my two positions, one for winter and one for summer. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope that this video was helpful to you guys that are considering going off grid and helping you make a decision on whether or not you're gonna put those panels on your roof or if you're gonna have them closer to the ground. Remember, uh, having access to these things is invaluable. Scooping the snow off, tilting those things for maximum power uh, absorption, as well as being able to work on them if, if something were to go wrong or say uh, one of the panels cracked or, or, or stopped working for whatever reason. It, if it's at ground level, it's accessible and you can get to it. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.